Welcome to Advanced Aggregation with the RangoDB's query language AQL. In this lunch session, we will continue where we left off in the previous session, which was about basic aggregation, specifically the collect operation. And we took a look at uh, some of the variants of this operation that allows us to group data, uh, return all distinct values of a data set, uh, and also to count uh, the number of times a value occurs. And uh, today we will look at the aggregate variants uh, that allow us to compute statistical properties, for instance, uh, but also a few other things. Uh, we'll also look at a few more ways you can use collect in your own queries. Like in the previous video, we will use the Game of Thrones data set from our AQL tutorial, specifically the characters. Here's a table view of that data set. And the queries to import this into a collection are over here and here. I already created uh, collection characters and run these queries once to uh, get these characters imported. Now let's get started with the basic collect query. We can simply iterate over our characters and use collect, some variable name and we reference one of the document attributes as well as return the aggregation results. And that gives us all of the unique surnames. But what if we wanted to group by another attribute but do that separately? It's tempting to add another condition here like this. But what this gives us is all of the unique combinations of surname and name and not the individually grouped results. So how can we uh, group separately? One way would be to just uh, group by a single attribute in one query and then run a second query for the other attribute. But it's also possible to do that in a single query using subqueries. So let's try that. Uh, so we use the let keyword and specify a variable name. And then in parentheses, we can write our uh, uh, subquery. We can actually reuse what we already had here, um, but just the name of an object. And then we can copy paste this and adjust the names for a second subquery. Also, the uh, attribute needs to be changed, of course. And then we can return um, both of these arrays. And then, yeah, we get all of the unique surnames here and all of the unique names here. But there's actually another way to do this using collect. And that is with the aggregate variant. As you can see, there are actually a few ways you can use this, but it's always a combination of collect and aggregate, not just aggregate on its own. And what we can do is use one of the supported functions for aggregations. And that is the unique function here to get all the unique names. So this is specifically for getting the unique values. Uh, but as you can see, there are also a few other functions that can be used in combination with this aggregate keyword to compute um, things like the minimum, maximum, sum, and average efficiently. So let's rewrite our query to do that. We can get rid of all this uh, subquery code and just start with our basic collect query. And instead of uh, grouping, we can actually use the aggregate keyword directly without any uh, condition here for grouping. And then we say we want the surnames uh, equal sign and then one of the supported functions, in this case unique. And then we reference the document attribute like this. And yeah, let's uh, return this so we can see what we did. And yeah, we get an array of all of the unique names. Uh, but the nice part is we can actually do this for multiple attributes uh, like this, separate with a comma, and then we want to get the names. 
and then also uh, return them. And then this is basically the same result that we had before using subqueries, the unique surnames and the unique names. We can, we can add more aggregate expressions to, for example, return how many unique values there are. So let's do that for the surnames using the count distinct function or count unique. And also for the names. There's no difference between count distinct and count unique, they're just aliases. And then let's return these two uh, variables as well. And then here we see there are 21 unique sur uh, surnames, yeah, and 43 unique names. We can uh, add even more expressions, for example, uh, statistical properties. Uh, so let's say we want to know the minimum age using the min function and also the maximum age using the max function. And we could even do like the average, um, using the AVG or average uh, function and maybe let's also add the sum and return all of these. And there we go. We get all of these properties. What's nice about the aggregate variance is that this data like here, these statistical properties are computed on the fly and not as a post operation. So it takes less memory because not all of the underlying data has to be uh, kept in memory and then aggregated, but it's actually done during the collect operation. Doing this with a post operation would be like returning the age of all of the characters, then using a subquery to run, for example, the min function over it. And then we also get this minimum value of 10. But this isn't very efficient because all of these age attribute values need to be in memory in order to run the min function. Uh, whereas the aggregate variants of collect, uh, they just keep a single value in memory. And then while it iterates over all of the characters, it just updates um, the value to whatever the lowest value is. In our example aggregate query, we didn't group by anything, but we only had uh, aggregate expressions. So we use this variant over here, but it is possible to group and aggregate at the same time and also use the into keyword to get access to um, the records that fell into that group. So yeah, let's actually try that. So we could, for example, use the alive status of the characters to create two groups, alive and not alive. And then we run all of these aggregations for each of these groups instead of over the entire data set. And that looks like this. And yeah, we get the statistical properties and then also two lists of unique surnames and names and also the unique counts. And then there's this other group, um, one of them alive and one not alive. To actually know which one's which, we should also include this attribute like this. And we can also add an into clause here, provide a variable name, and that gets us access to the uh, original character documents in full, as you can see here. Uh, if you want to learn more about the into keyword, then check out the previous lunch session. And note that you can't use the keep keyword in this position here in, in this combination with aggregate, whereas without aggregate, uh, this would be possible to use to uh, instruct the query optimizer to only keep uh, certain variables 
in this case there is just this one here uh, in the scope um, so yeah can't use uh, this this will raise an arrow but you can uh, create projections um, normally so for example uh, return just the traits from the character documents instead of like the entire character documents and that would look like this. You can also use aggregate for counting. So basically do what you can do with the special concept with count in two, which will give us the total number of uh, characters, which is 43. And yeah, with collect, this would be like this, the aggregate, and we can use the length or it's synonymous count function and actually provide any value here. It, it doesn't actually matter. And that gives us the same result. That pretty much covers what you can do with the collect operation in combination with the aggregate keyword. If you're interested, there's also the window operation that uses the aggregate keyword. We have a separate lunch session about that, 15.5, showing you how you can uh, do aggregation with sliding windows. There's one more thing I want to show, and that is a query with two collect operations, where the latter collect is dependent on the former. Let's start with our trusted example of grouping by the surname and using an into clause to get access to this grouped information. And we actually just need the C variable, so we can use a projection here. And my goal is to return a list um, uh, that maps the family names to uh, a list of the alive characters and the dead characters. Uh, now, if I would use another collect operation here, then I would potentially lose access to the surname variable after the collect. Um, but uh, I could use into to uh, let it capture this information. But uh, I think it's easier in this case to use a subquery. And yeah, with, because of the subquery, we don't need to worry about um, this variable getting discarded because a subquery has its own scope and collect only removes the variables or most variables from the current scope. So we need something like this. And now, yeah, let's start to write this uh, subquery for each member in this group. We uh, group by the alive status. And uh, what we want to return are the names. And then finally return all that. And what I want to do here is um, not return the alive status as a boolean, but instead uh, return a string, alive or dead. And I actually want to use an, uh, I want to use this as an attribute key. So um, I can use the square brackets so that I can. Uh, write an expression that will be used as attribute key. And this is as simple as uh, the uh, alive status. If it's true, then return alive and otherwise dead. This is a ternary operator that lets us do this if then else thing. And the attribute value um, is supposed to be the names. So the ones that we aggregated here. And now outside of the subquery, we also need to return something at the global scope. And that will be um, the surname, again, using the actual value of this attribute and not surname literally as the attribute key. And um, we want the list of names. What we get is uh, an object for each family name. And in there, we 
get an uh, array that has two objects. One is the dead list and the other is the alive list. To make this a little nicer, what we can do is merge together these objects. Let's take a look. Now we no longer have this uh, array around this, but instead we like we have this single object with a dead and an alive key. Uh, but we still have like one object per family. And to make this even nicer, I want to use uh, the family name as the key and then the dead and alive list as a value. And we can do that by simply adding another merge at the top level. And that will give us this nice mapping of uh, family name to these lists. We covered the remaining aspects of the collect operation today. Be sure to also watch the first video uh, about the collect operation, lunchback session number 22. Uh, also check out our documentation for more details. And yeah, if you want to uh, share a query with us uh, or need help to write an aggregation query, then yeah, feel free to reach out.